Malaria has had a lasting impact on uh, childhood morbidity and mortality over the last 5,000 years. Uh, and this has had a significant impact on the human genome. So several uh, malaria protective variants have been selected uh, for their survival advantage against uh, malaria morbidity and mortality. One of these variants is the Danto blood group variant that was recently identified um, and has been shown to confer a strongly protective effect uh, against severe malaria, up to 74% protection against severe malaria. Uh, which is a, a magnitude that is similar to the sickle cell trait uh, effect. Sickle cell trait is the strongest uh, malaria protective effect um, that, is, that has been described so far. So recent work uh, by our group, recent in vitro studies by our group showed that the Dantu blood group variant confers protection uh, through resistance of the Dantu variant cells to invasion by malaria parasites. Um, so we think that this uh, resistance to invasion by malaria parasites prevents uh, more severe infections uh, downstream. So this hypothesis has however not been tested in vivo. So our current study that was just published uh, had the opportunity to now study this hypothesis in vivo. Uh, we were able to test the impact of DAN2 on um, malaria parasite growth, P plasmodium falciparum parasite growth. Uh, in, in uh, individuals uh, who were uh, enrolled in a controlled human malaria infection study, or SHIMI, as we call it here. Um, and SHIMI basically involves uh, inoculation of healthy uh, adults with uh, malaria parasite. So these are aseptic, purified, cryopreserved malaria parasites. And then monitoring of these individuals for 21 days to see um, how the parasite grows yeah, within these individuals. Uh, so the primary outcome of this uh, uh, shimmy study was uh, checking to see if parasites grow uh, to a threshold of 500, 500 parasites per microliter. If any study participants got to this uh, malaria parasite growth threshold, they were given treatments. Um, there were some individuals who uh, manifested symptoms of severe malaria before this threshold was reached, and these individuals are also given treatment. Um, and then at the end of the study, regardless of whether you got any malaria symptoms or whether you reached the parasitemia threshold, everyone was given um, malaria treatment. And so our study's aim was to test the impact of Dantu on um, the treatment outcomes. And what we found was that Individuals that carry the Dantu variant were less likely to reach this 500 uh, parasites per microliter threshold uh, and therefore were less likely to need treatment. So none of the individuals that carry the Dantu parasite reached this uh, parasitemia threshold. Um, and among the individuals that um, exhibited symptoms, uh, about 25% of them were Dantu heterozygotes or individuals that carry one copy of the Dantu uh, mutation uh, and 0% of them uh, were done to homozygotes or individuals that carry two copies of the done to uh, mutation compared to about 44% of non done to individuals that exhibited symptoms uh, of malaria and needed to be given treatment. So we see this uh, protective effect uh, of the done to variant in a sort of dose response manner than you know, the heterozygotes, um, some of them will need treatment, none of the homozygotes need a treatment at all. So this is the first time we've shown that Dantu has a protective effect against malaria in an in vivo setting yeah, in this controlled human malaria infection study um, uh, setup. Uh, and so the implication of this or the significance of this finding is that um, we will then be able to use information about how these malaria protective variants confer their protective effect to inform new therapies and new treatments um, to, uh, for uh, malaria. Um, and uh, hopefully in the future maybe we might be able to talk about uh, production of drugs that mimic the Dantu effect.